What's the future for Iraq, given all the violence and chaos there? The former head of the US Army, General Ray Odierno, says partitioning the country might be the only solution. Iraq's top Shia cleric, Ayatollah Ali Sistani, said last month that without real reform, Iraq could be, quote, dragged to partition. Remember, ISIL now controls one third of the country's territory, while Iraq's Kurds have very little interest in being governed from Baghdad. But in a recent and much discussed op-ed, the country's top diplomat here in Washington, D.C., said those predicting partition couldn't be more wrong. Iraq's ambassador to the United States, Lukman Faili, joins me now. Why are you so sure that a formal partition of Iraq won't happen, given an informal one seems to have already happened on the ground? Thank you for having me on the show. I think uh, Iraqis are not calling for it. Uh, the international community are not calling for it. Geopolitics does not allow it. ISIS or Daesh are calling for it. Do we want to fulfill their wishes? No way. We think the unity of Iraq will be the best deal in defeating Daesh and helping with the prosperity and stability of Iraq. So it's an Iraqi call for unity. You say that only ISIS is calling for it, but as I mentioned, the top American general who ran the war in Iraq says it's the only solution because it's so divided. Even the top Shia cleric in the country, Ayatollah Sistani, says it may happen. Whether you like it or not, it may happen. I don't see it. At all, ever. I don't see it. I'm talking about in, in the reading of the current okay. reading and the desires and wishes of the Iraqis. You say desires of the Iraqis. You're both Kurdish and Shia. Uh, what's your message to your fellow Kurds who always seem to be agitating to be free from the Shia-led government uh, in Baghdad. They seem to well, want to go their well, own way, your fellow Baghdad is a has a government which is representative of the whole of Iraq. The cabinet is the reflection of the whole of Iraq, so it's not a Shia-led. My own personal belief is that there is no time and there is certainly not appetite for it ge geopolitically, and Iraqis don't want it. The Kurds themselves, they have adhered to the constitution. But the Kurds want it. Let's you know. Let's be honest. You know, you know better than I do. The Kurds want to be free. Well, they want their own state. But also, the Kurds know the realities of the situation and know, know what's the best for them. The, there is a better stability, prosperity, development for the Kurds as part of Iraq. Iraqis also want that. They Even say they say that actually it's better for them to go it alone, sell their own oil, get their own money. Right now, they're arguing with the central government well, over how us? the revenues are we split. Have, we have a constitution which we all agreed to. That's what's binding us. Are the Kurds sticking to the constitution when it comes well, to oil sales? Well, they have to stick to the constitution. Are they sticking? Every, Not whether they have to. Everybody has to stick to but the constitution. are they sticking to the constitution? We are an, we are an evolving democracy. We I'll are take having that as a, a no, We have also... Now, let's be, also be talk about that. We are encouraging decentralization by the nature of the constitution and the desires of the people. Your critics are quite clear that you, they say, are the representative of a sectarian pro-Shia, anti-Sunni government. What do you say to them? Well, the president is a Sunni Kurd. Uh, the minister of defense is a Sunni Arab. I'm a Kurd Shia. The prime minister is a, Kurd, uh, is a Shia Arab. But you don't, you don't accept any claims then that the government no, behaved no, no, in a way no. that marginalized some democracy. of the Sunnis who went into the hands? We are a new democracy. We are at the very early age of a new state. So this part of dialogue is, is required. No single entity can say that they are free from abusing others. That's what took place, unfortunately, in 2005 and 6 and 7. Now we have a coalition government who focused on unity. That's reflected in the parliament. It's reflected in the cabinet. Just on all the violence, you mentioned Daesh, ISIL. We've seen their atrocity videos, but now we're seeing some pretty horrific videos uh, from some of the pro-government so-called Shia militias. Uh, one recent video which went viral showed a top Iraqi Shia commander mutilating the dead corpse of an ISIL fighter. Why doesn't your government stop such things from happening? Well, the prime minister has made public that he takes any of these claims seriously. He, he, we have zero tolerance for them. But at the zero time, tolerance, but they're happening. No, you no, just have to no, go on YouTube. I'm not, I'm not uh, denying that they are not happening, but the, as a system no. Do we deal with it when we know about these issues? Yes, we do. Do we have a 100% professional army? No, but we're working, as I said, we are a project in the making. That's still ongoing. We need support in, in relation to further professionalism, further training and others. And you would agree issue. that the behavior but, of some of these groups on the ground acts as a recruiting sergeant for Daesh, for at, ISIL? Certainly, certainly. But at the same time, we also know that Daesh have no rule of engagement. They create atrocities. That's why we need to have a more professional training and we need support in that aspect as well. Ambassador Faley, thanks for joining me in the arena. Thank you. That's our show. Up front, we'll be back next week.